Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll try to see the diversity or the variations which we see in animal kingdom on some more parameters. In previous part, we have seen the diversity which is there on two parameters. Let us talk about one more parameters that is the body plan. We have seen on the basis of habitat and the levels of organization in the previous video. Now this is body plan. Now in case of body plan we mean that what exactly the body is made up of. So here we classify it or we have three different categories of animals. One is known as the cell aggregate body plan. And this is nothing but cellular level of organization. In case of cellular level of organization, we said that the organism or the animal is a multicellular animal, but each cell is working independently and performs all its activities on its own. There is no coordination between different cells. Here also we are talking about now the complete body. The body is made up of many cells. Each cell is independently working and there is no coordination. So this is basically the same. That is the cellular level of organization. The next one is known as the blind sac body plan. Here, there is only one opening which helps in ingestion that is taking in of food and ejection that is throwing out of food. Or in other words, we can say that these animals, they have incomplete digestive system. So if, um, let us write an example here. Here we can take the same example that is of sponges. And in case of blind sac body plan, we can take the example of hydra. If we see the structure of hydra, we see that there is a cavity and this is that body which is attached to the substratum. And here are all those tentacles. Now this body or this cavity rather is having only one opening. So it is a sac like structure, the other end is closed and that is what is known as the blind sac body plan and this opening is going to help it taking in of food as well as throwing out of that undigested food. The third type of body plan is known as tube within a tube. Now this means that the animals have complete digestive system. This digestive system is in the form of a tube. Say for example, if we draw a structure of say a fish. So here, there would be the elementary canal. There would be an opening here, that is the anterior opening. Then there would be all the structures which are there in the digestive system, including intestine and everything. And this is going to open out through another opening. So it is like one bigger tube and there is another tube which is inside and tube has to have these two openings. So complete digestive system is there and this is seen in all higher animals. Now when we talk of tube within a tube body plan, we also talk of a term that is blastopore, the elementary canal which is formed. When we talk of embryonic development in higher animals, the first stage is where the zygote has divided to form a ball of cells, which we call the morula. Then morula develops a cavity and there are cells, smaller cells, which are known as the micromeres. They form the outer layer and the bigger cells, they become the embryonic disc or embryonal knob. And here is a cavity which is called blastocele. In the blastocele appears a, an opening which is called blastopore. So if we draw that blastopore, how it is going to be there? It is formed by invagination. So there is a ball-like thing and there is an invagination. So this opening is 
blastopore. Now there are two possibilities. This depression is going to get deeper and deeper and ultimately it is going to open here. That means there will be a complete tube formed or in other words we can say complete elementary canal or digestive system will be formed and there are going to be these two openings. So this is going to be like a tube. But what is this blastopore going to form? If this blastopore forms mouth, that means the first opening which is formed is mouth. Second option is that the blastopore forms the anus. So what is going to happen is there is one opening which is formed. If this opening becomes mouth, then the mouth will be formed first and later on anus will develop. Opposite of it, if this opening becomes anus, then this depression gets deeper and then mouth will be formed later on. The organisms or the animals in which the blastopore changes into mouth, they are called protostomes. And the ones in which blastopore forms the anus, they are known as deuterostomes. Proterostomes are all the animals, all the phyla except chordates and echinoderms. So we can write here that echinoderms and chordates, they are deuterostomes. And what would come in protostomes? All phyla except these two. So here we will write that all Phyla except echinoderms and chordates. This is very important and that is why as per evolution chordates are closest to the echinoderms. And when we write all the phyla the sequence also goes the same way. It is echinoderm and then chordata. So these two are closest and this is the similarity which they exhibit. So when we talk of body plan, tube within the tube is important and these two terms are very very important, protostomes and deuterostomes. So this is again variation or diversity which is seen in case of animal kingdom on the basis of body plan. Now the second or the next parameter that we can talk of is symmetry. Symmetry means how is the body arranged or how are the body parts arranged can be cut it into two equal halves. So there are two possibilities either we can cut it into two equal halves or not. So if an organism cannot be cut into two equal halves we'll call it asymmetrical and if it can be cut into two equal halves then it would be symmetrical. Asymmetrical examples can be amoeba, adult snails, amoeba has an irregular body so it is difficult to cut it into two equal halves. Snails when we see the snail has a mucus sluggish body and there is a shell over it. The shell is a spirally coil shell. So as the snails grow their body also grows inside that spiral shell. So if you cut that spiral shell, you're never going to get two equal halves. So that also comes here. So we will write adult snails. And the reason why we are writing adult snails because the larval stages of snails are bilaterally symmetrical. So we have to specify when the shell is formed and the animal is inside that shell. Symmetrical, that means we can cut it into two equal halves. Now the symmetry can be again of three types. One is called universal, universal symmetry or spherical symmetry. Here the organism has to be circular, ball-like and we can cut the animal into two equal halves by any plane which is going through the center. This can be seen in case of ball box. In ball box, the complete organism is in the form of a spherical ball like structure and if a plane goes through that center then we can cut it into two equal halves.
parts and that plane can be any plane it is like if we visualize it like a ball and we try to cut that ball through any plane which is going through the center then we would get two equal halves the next is known as radial symmetry radial symmetry is normally seen in animals which have little flattened body so there is an upper surface and a lower surface and the plane is going to be a radial plane it passes through the radius now here we can have tetramerous that means it can be seen in case of jellyfish in case of jellyfish this is the body and there are four arms so we can cut it into two equal halves by these four plates which are going to give us equal parts so this is tetramerous then we can have pentamerous this is in case of starfish and similarly we can have hexamerous also this is seen in case of sea cucumber now this is radial symmetry for this we have oral and aboral surface upper lower surfaces little flattened body and the next type is bilateral symmetry bilateral means we can cut the body into two equal halves passing through only one longitudinal uh, plane so if body is cut like this then we get two equal halves which is seen in case of the vertebrates now when we talk of bilateral symmetry we also have to understand the sides we use the term anterior side posterior side dorsal side ventral side this is applicable here to understand this suppose we make a figure this rep represents human figure and there is one more figure which is like an animal which has four legs so where are the sides which side will be called the anterior side which will be called the posterior side so anterior is the side which has mouth so it is the mouth side posterior side is the side of the anus ventral side is the belly side and dorsal side is the vertebral column side so in case of humans our mouth and belly they are on the same side so for us anterior and ventral sides are same but for an animal like a cat or a dog the sides are different this is going to be anterior because this is the mouth side this is the anal side so it becomes posterior the lower side which has belly this becomes the ventral side and here is going to be the dorsal vertebral column so this is going to be the dorsal side whereas in case of humans anterior and ventral are same posterior and dorsal are same but in case of four legged animals anterior is front which has the mouth posterior is back posterior side which has the anal opening dorsal is the vertebral column side and ventral is the belly side so here when we talk of vertebrates which show bilateral symmetry we also need to understand the sides so on these two parameters also we can find that there is such a vast variety of animals in the next part we'll again take few more parameters to see different types of animals